Thanks for tuning into this uh, video. We're going to talk about the amplifiers in the early 70s Rockola, specifically 45730, which went in the 442 and 444, and 47160, which went in the 448 to 451. The 446 and the 452 don't get as much interest. Those amplifiers are very similar and would apply here pretty much to what I'm going to say. Um, I had done an overview video earlier on these, if you want to refer to that, but it, it's important to address specific issues sooner or later. So we're going to go over the most common problem that you're going to have with this amp or, or many of these amps, and that is an absent or weak channel. Uh, one side basically doesn't work. The left channel has good sound, the right channel, there's nothing coming out of the tweeter or woofer. And uh, uh, how, how do you, so how do you approach that? Uh, and that's what we're going to do in this video. Now, having said that, um, remember that the amplifier is only one component of this of the sound system, albeit the most important component. But if you have a cartridge wire that's loose or uh, broken, that'll cause the absent channel um, <clears throat> on one side. If your speakers are bad or that crossover capacitor on the tweeters hasn't been replaced, that can cause... Uh, unequal volume. So those two things should be addressed. Uh, I hope you all know how to put a 1.5 uh, volt battery across the two terminals of a of a speaker to test the voice coil for continuity, as well as uh, check for the uh, correct ohms. And I hope you all know the trick to switch from stereo to mono on the front of your amplifier. And if that corrects the inequality of the channels, then your problem is not your amp, it's out front with the speaker, excuse me, the cartridge or the cartridge wires. Very important. Um, the uh, amplifier, when you put it into mono, will uh, blend the two channels coming from the uh, cartridge. And, and if there's only one channel coming in or one wire's coming in, it'll still put it out through both sides or both, um, all the speakers, it'll be a little less volume, but that's how you tell. Uh, uh, and you certainly want to do that first because uh, that's an easier fix than going all through the amp. But having said that, let's let's get started here. We'll go through the schematics. I'll, ch I'll show you where to check voltages, put check your uh, signal and walk your way through the amp so you can isolate uh, uh, where the problem is. You don't need an oscilloscope, you need a good schematic and you need a good uh, uh, multimeter and, uh, and some c common sense and uh, you'd be surprised how successful you can be with this. So let's get started. If you have the luxury to get a, a wiring diagram in addition to a manual, I, I think it's helpful. This is the wiring diagram for the 444 and this amp of course is 45730. Now um, just a uh, as an aside, if you had a choice between getting a 45730 amp or a 47160 amp at a yard sale, uh, get the 45730. And the reason is um, they're both basically the same except for one wire, the mute relay wire. And um, so the 45730 will work in the 442, 444, and it'll also work in the 448 through 451. That's a big advantage. Now, the 47160, uh, which is for the 448 to 451, the usual amp, it will work in the 442 and 444, but you won't have a mute relay, so it's not as valuable. Um, I, I know that's maybe trivia, but uh, you do have the option. The 45730 would be more versatile for you. Now, let's look at the, uh, this is the uh, um, left part of the sch schematic from the uh, wiring diagram. This is the preamp board. And I, I do want to caution you um, one thing here. The, it's, it's the, the um, manual and the um, wiring diagram are confusing. They're somewhat uh, reversed. Now, in this here, you can see that the left channel is at the top, and that's getting the... Uh, orange white wire as an input coming over from the uh, input. Now you're going to use the magnetic pickup obviously so 
You'll see all these capacitors over here in the ceramic pickup. You can ignore them because you're not going to be using that anyway. Don't bother replacing anything there. But coming in from the pickup here, magnetic pickup, you have the two wires going to each channel. And in this case, the orange-red is going to the right, which is true. And the orange-white is going to the left. But if you look in your manual for this board, it's just the opposite, see? This is the diagram you'll get in the manual, which is also very valuable. But look, orange white uh, is going to the, still going to the left, but the left is at the bottom and the right is at the top. I just want to caution you on this. Be careful. Uh, they're, they're, it is a bit confusing, but uh, uh, that's, uh, that's the way they have it set up. So these, these are the first two points you're going to check your signal. You're going to go put a, a probe on B and A, uh, and you're going to go bonk, 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 bonk. And if you get bonk, 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 you're good. Then everything else um, all the way through is going to be fine. But we're going to assume that one of these is going to not have any signal. You're going to put your probe on here. I'll show you how. You'll get a bonk, and on the other one, you won't get anything. And that's, and then we'll just walk our way through and uh, try to figure out where the we're losing the signal and where the uh, uh, correction needs to be. Next checkpoint then would be the other side of the uh, preamp board and uh, where the two wires leave the preamp board, The uh, in this case the left and the right. We didn't have any signal on the right, so then it goes into the uh, volume control plug here on pins two and six, and it rattles around the volume control and then comes back um, uh, to the uh, amp on one and five, okay? Uh, one uh, would be going to your right channel, which is out. It goes, both of them, one and five, then rattle around through the uh, slide switches, which is a big problem. So if you have a, uh, you do your bonk test here and you suddenly have signal here and you have signal on the left channel, well, then where was your problem? Well, it had to be in here, that somewhere in the preamp board, you lost your signal. And when you uh, applied a, a signal past the preamp board, everything was fine. Um, it won't be quite as loud. It'll, you'll have to listen a little more carefully because it won't have the benefit of the preamp ampl amplification. But that, that's how you do this. Uh, but I'm going to, most of the time, you're going to do your bonk test on both of these pins one and five, and you're still going to have the absent uh, the channel that was bad is probably still going to be bad because the preamp problems, yes, you should replace those op-amp units. I should have mentioned that. They're those black um, op-amp units, um, and, you've, uh, and you've already replaced the capacitors, and I'll show you. But uh, very likely, your problem may be in all these slide switches, and then you've got to go and clean all of them, okay? And uh, they also go over through the... Uh, um, the, the mute relay, so you have to clean the mute relay contacts. This is a, a big uh, area of, 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 of difficulty here. If, if cleaning contacts here is a lot of, is worthwhile because you might be surprised how, uh, how often your signal suddenly comes back after just cleaning a contact. But then the, la the last checkpoint then, if you do all that and you come over to the driver board and, uh, uh, your inputs are going in on the two two wires there. I'll, I'll show you uh, on the uh, um, amp. Um, now, if you put a signal here and a signal here, again, it'll be lower. You'll get lower uh, uh, volume. But if, um, <clears throat> if you get a signal now and you didn't have it before, well, then you know your problem was here and go back and uh, um, check these guys again. Um, but if you still have no signal here, then your problem is in the driver board or the output uh, transistors, and you'll have to just check them carefully. Uh, but um, I've, I've found really, uh, uh, you've already replaced the can caps in here, and we'll do that. But I'll tell you, you get a lot of a bang for your time by um, cleaning in here, and uh, it does solve quite a few of your problems. Yes, the last... Uh, point I wanted to make is there, there's those two rotary switches. They are right at the output. So if you still didn't have good signal going into the uh, driver board on one side, look at these uh, those switches, and I'll show you again those. And of course, you're going to check your heat sink transistors, your 
your uh, output transistors. You're going to check the driver board uh, quite carefully. But this is how we do it. There's the checkpoint here at the beginning, here in the middle, and and then here at the uh, at driver board. And by dividing and conquering, you can uh, uh, isolate things pretty readily here because these boards are not ridiculous. Here's your here's your uh, uh, driver board. The, the, the number of components there to check is, is not overwhelming. And guess what? They're all readily available. So just do it. If, if it turns out that this is where your problem is, well, it's not a, it doesn't take days and days to go over this. Okay. It's they're pretty easy to solder. At any rate, that's, let's go to the uh, real lamp. Uh, this is just giving you uh, an overview of how we do this. Uh, we'll, um, show you the amp here. And here's the amp I got off of eBay and I got it cheap because uh, the gentleman who owned it had put new capacitors, can capacitors in and still had no channel on uh, one side. So I obviously looked it over before I plugged it in. Now some things I, I don't like, um, he really was a little sloppy here. With These really should have some heat shrink on them. These, um, these, um, electrolytic capacitors here. They're just sort of dangling. Uh, that's just not good technique. But all the capacitors he put in, all the electrolytics were put in correctly. Um, for some reason, he also replaced all of these little um, ceramic uh, capacitors. I've never seen anybody do these. They, they almost never go bad. Here's what, here's what the original ones look like. They're pretty large. Uh, the replacements he put in, of course, are more modern or smaller, but that seemed to be an awful lot of uh, unnecessary work. But uh, uh, at any rate, uh, and he did the same on the driver board. He put in all new um, ceramic capacitors, which seems to me to be overkill. But what he didn't do was he had the wire, the output of the driver board, I'm sorry, the preamp board, it goes over to the volume control. We talked about this. Well, it was uh, it was on the wrong connection. When he reconnected, he put it here where the green wire should have been. So that's why he had no ch channel on one side. Because when I, uh, I'm going to plug it in now, but when I plugged it in and cleaned a couple contacts, this amp was perfect. So I got myself a winner. Now, uh, I, before I plug it in, I want to uh, point out the, um, I did, I always check the uh, transformers. When you check the two wires, this should read about 40 ohms. These should read about 40 ohms. And then you do one to three and two to four. They read about four ohms. It's it's in the manual. But be sure you don't have a burnout tra transfer. It's easy enough to check. And then over here, I just check the two wires that you're using. There's a, um, a resistor across that. It's 270 ohms. But what you'll read... Uh, will be the um, um, the uh, transformer um, winding, which is usually about one ohm. So that's what you want to see across the two, that resistor and that resistor, because that's the one you're using. And when I saw those were all good, I said, hey, I, I, I got lucky on this one. So uh, I'll just go through with the signals with you and where I have found troubles, and then we'll, be, uh, we'll conclude here. So I plugged it in, and we do not have any hum, which is good. We'll just go through the uh, checkpoints that we mentioned before. Here's our uh, preamp board, and this is our, in this case, the um, the right. And you see, we got a nice, nice signal there over here. It, it sounds like there's a little distortion there, but it's actually the speaker is a little loose. And then, if we didn't have a Signal on one side. The next place we go is to the pin one and five. Now they're hard to hear down here on the uh, on the uh, volume control plug. One, sorry, one, that's one, and that you can see the one and five. The red and the white wires. They're going over to all the slide switches. So uh, go uh, check there, and then. If you have signal there or are still missing a signal, you just go until you pick up signal on both sides, and then you know the pre preceding uh, component was uh, faulty. Now these are those um, op amp units. He didn't replace them, but I would, um, I usually do. And um, 
And then, of course, you exercise all these rotary um, resistors. Um, this is the balance. If you had unequal volume, check this to be sure it's not uh, dirty. Rotate that. But then you go up here to the, uh, to the driver board and put your... It's not as uh, loud, obviously, since it doesn't have all the transistors. And then over here. And that's pretty much uh, it. You know, you, it, in this case, we're healthy. Um, I like the tone. I'll probably still check the uh, heatsink transistors. I'm going to clean up this wiring here. But I, I think we've got uh, a, a winner. Um, I think I got lucky. In conclusion, I hope you got something out of this uh uh, fi fixing things in is fun, and uh, having a good sounding amplifier uh, is very satisfying when you can uh, do the work yourself. And I'm just trying to offer these videos as encouragement that this can be done. It, it's not as, as tough as it uh, seems initially. Uh, the components are inexpensive and, and mostly, for the most part, readily available. So the next w video will probably be, again, on selector problems. I've had a couple real... Um, difficult uh, issues to sort through and I'll post probably in a couple of weeks about some additional selector issues on these machines. Till then, uh, um, enjoy your spring and uh, um, get your jukebox working.